Hey guys, so I recently saw this book at Barnes & Noble and I just had to pick it up. It just looked so interesting and inspiring and I thought it would be a great way to kind of get myself back into drawing and doodling and learn some more techniques to add to my artwork. So this book is called The Art of Zentangle and for any of you who have seen my doodle videos on this channel or drawing videos, then you may think, oh, well, your drawings kind of look like Zentangles already. I didn't even know what a Zentangle was and people were commenting, oh, well, that's actually a Zentangle. But really, what a Zentangle is, and I'm gonna have to read this because it's a specific thing. Zentangle is a fun, contemplative, relaxing art form that employs structured and coordinating patterns as a means of creating beautiful and interesting pieces of art. And then according to the creators of Zentangle, they say that this art form focuses on the process of art creation rather than the end result. This is just something that's totally relaxing as they said because I spent hours this past weekend just drawing and doing some of the exercises in this book and I just kind of got lost in it and it was just totally like me in a drawing world and that was it. I don't know how else to explain it. Drawing is just something that's always been one of my favorite hobbies, one of my favorite passions or I don't know biggest passions I guess I would say. There are patterns that are taught at the very beginning. You can draw inspiration from those or draw whatever you want. And this was actually the page I should have showed you first, which is the getting started page. And it shows you a bunch of different techniques and things that I've actually used before, such as stippling, but I also use scumbling. If you guys are familiar with those, it's just a really good way to fill background space when you're drawing. But a lot of these are just line variations and squiggles and zigzags and you know I've been doing a lot of them without even reading this book but it still is very helpful to have examples right in front of you and in one place when you are feeling just kind of like you don't know what to draw and you aren't inspired to do anything and you're just kind of lost you can kind of look to what you've drawn in here and add it to a bigger piece of art so that's my tip I mean even though I've been drawing for years for my entire life basically I still think that this is very helpful to just kind of brush up on the technique do exercises I mean I'm not like a master at realistic drawing or anything but I do like to do some doodles and for anyone who's asked me for tips on doodling or drawing the most effective way to practice and get better is to just keep putting a pencil or a pen on paper and moving it around. That's the best way. Just keep doing the same things, different things, different exercises, and just draw every day and you'll get better and better and practice makes almost perfect. Here's the first page that introduces the techniques and then it gives you some boxes over here to practice with. The top three are the patterns that the book gives you. And then underneath, they want you to draw what you think goes along with that or just anything you feel like drawing, basically. For Aurora, which kind of looks like leaves or spades, like on a card, here's mine. I did do the leaves pretty similar to theirs, but I added some more black and shading. And then around that piece, I just did whatever I felt like. So I added some dots and triangles and different shapes and lines all over. The second one, purse, kind of looks like a flower with a bunch of little circles around it. So I made mine look more like daisies than theirs because I added black to the middle. And I only did two of them and then I just kind of filled in all that space around. The third one is dewdrop, and I feel like I totally messed this one up because I was like, oh, well, I'm gonna do all my shading with a pen because I need practice doing that. Yeah, you definitely should use a pencil unless you're super, super good at shading because I completely, in my opinion, messed this up and I don't like how it turned out at all. I don't think that the squares in my heart are big enough and I don't think that they're big enough in comparison to the background squares, basically. So just everything about this I don't really like. We will pretend that it doesn't exist. Moving on to shading, I 
went with circles just like they did and then I just shaded almost every single individual circle with a drawing pencil. And I feel like I don't want to add anything to that white space. Sometimes simplicity is key and it just kind of, I don't know, it works sometimes. So I don't want to add to that and mess it up. One of my favorite drawings on this page is the one I did for rounding which just looks really, really pretty and swirly. Kind of reminds me of peacock feathers or plant. Finally on this page is the sparkle. So for the sparkle, I kind of did what they did in a way, but I added different shapes. So I did circles and squares and triangles. And then at the end, I put a star. And then I have swirls coming out of that star and little twinkly shapes in the background. Now we have the Patterns and Borders pages. The drawings on the left hand side are the ones that were already in the book. And then on this side, these are the drawings that I did. So the same on this page, those are theirs. And then these are the ones that I drew. We'll start at the top. This one kind of looks like peacock feathers. And instead of doing mine in clusters, I decided to kind of radiate them out from the middle and do three different wings. Not really wings but just three different sections and then I used colors for this one as you can see and I kind of alternated between a white background with black spots and a black background with white dots and I put hearts in the yellow ones. Next is this arch and they put lines inside to form diagonals or triangles. On mine I decided to do two arches and then I just kind of put some ovals in the middle and I embellished with dots and a kind of ruffle shape and then some scumbling on the corners. Next they did some squiggly shapes with lines and dots. So for mine, I went along with theirs for the most part but I added color to mine and I made my dots a little bit darker. At the bottom, they did this kind of radiating pinwheel with triangles and for mine, as you can see, I kind of went crazy and made really tiny, detailed, intricate patterns. So this drawing probably took me the longest out of all of them. And it may have taken around two hours. I didn't time it, but it took a really long time. And there's just a ton of different triangles and lines and boxes and dots. And I made sure to put some contrast so I have dark shapes throughout and then I also have lines and white to just kind of balance it. Moving on to this side, at the top they had some lines with dots and it kind of looks like a sea creature or Christmas lights or tree roots. So for mine I kind of did an upside down tree. That's how I think of it because I did a trunk at the top and then I kind of put a sky and some stars and then there's roots or branches that come down. It's really strange because it's like upside down. I did my dots differently from them obviously. I did bigger ones on three different parts and then I put really really tiny ones in the silver. For this one they did circles with kind of a crescent moon shape and then lines. So up here mine is similar to theirs but then I did some that are backwards down here so the crescent has the lines and then it's filled in on the other side but this is pretty self-explanatory it's just a bunch of circles and outlines for this one instead of doing really big black circles I decided to do little black circles and make a spiral shape out of them so that's what I did first and then I did the kind of pow shape around it. It kind of looks like a pow. And then after that I filled the entire background with tiny tiny swirls and black dots. And finally at the end I colored in the yellow. For the last one I gave myself a personal challenge to just kind of do this really quick because I spent so much time on each other doodle that I wanted to see what would happen if I just kind of let loose a little bit more. But I did pretty much follow what they showed. I think I might like theirs better though. I don't know. I'm not really too fond of this so I think that taking my time is beneficial. This one made me think of a snake, a river, and a feather all in one. And then on the outside I have just some square shapes and I put darker lines in some of them. For my pens, I decided to get some new ones and I got a bunch of archival ink pens. Some of them I found at Target in the scrapbooking section and the rest I found at Michael's in their kind of stamp scrapbooking section as well. I actually like these Micron pens way more than the G2 gel pens by Pilot that I usually show in my videos so I think from now on I'm going to be using Microns for my drawings because the ink is really smooth and straight. It doesn't 
create clumps or breaks. It's just so nice and smooth. I love them so much. And that's it. I have not gotten to the next pages, which are different types of borders. So in my next installment of this Zentangle series, if you guys want to see it, I can show you my completed borders and maybe I'll make it onto the next page as well or one of the pages in here because there's more stuff coming up. I do want to finish this book or at least do most of it, but there's a lot of pages left. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see me fill more pages of this Zentangle book, then just let me know in the comment section below. It does take quite a while to do each page because um, just for the things that I showed you, the drawings that I showed you in this video, I had probably spent over five hours on those at least. I mean, I don't really keep track when I draw because like I said, it is very relaxing and it's something that I enjoy spending time on so I don't want to like limit myself. I just don't ever have enough free time I feel so I had to make some time to draw and I really 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 am happy that I did that because this is just so rewarding to have finished pieces like this and just have stuff to look at and add to your portfolio but anyway if you want to see more of my drawings then just let me know and if you draw and even if you don't have this book let me see your photos on Instagram by using hashtag SoCraftastic. You can also show me pictures on Twitter and Facebook as well if you have those accounts. And maybe Pinterest if you post on there. Yeah. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. And I will see you very soon on Friday for my next DIY. Yay! Bye! Leo's been next to me just chilling this entire time. Right, Leo? Leo! Hi, good morning, even though it's pretty much afternoon. You sleep a lot.